Hello class, in this video we are going to be doing the final adjustments of, uh, to our Ubuntu virtual machine so that we can get, uh, get to use it as our the, uh, you know, regular computer for doing notes and our labs and everything that is from this point on going to occur during the course. So, um, in summary, this is what we are going to be doing, right? We're going to be updating it, but, you know, so we're going to be running the update command. We're going to do something that's called enable partners repositories, which is going to give access to some uh, restricted software and some other software that we might want to install later on. We're going to install the guest additions and we're going to install some applications. We're going to remove applications that we don't really need on, on, the, on, on this computer, like some pre-installed pre games that, like Sudoku, like we don't need all that because we're not going to be using it. Um, we're going to disable desktop animations because we're not going to use them. Uh, we're going to change uh, our default file manager to a file manager that performs much faster than the default one, just, to, just so that we can improve performance on our system. Uh, we're also going to be uh, replacing the default a screen uh, a screenshot tool that comes installed with Ubuntu with a better one uh, called FlameShot. Of which I have, a, 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 you know, a complete video on how to use on the channel. Uh, we're also going to be installing Dark Theme, which is completely optional. You know, uh, having good taste is optional. Uh, and then we're going to take a snapshot of our virtual machine once that is done. So um, I have, we have a guide on our page on how to do all of this. That has all the. Um, you know that have all the settings and all the commands that we're going to use and everything so if you go into guides and you click on ubuntu vm setup the link is gonna be in the description um here we have you know all the setup from the beginning to end how to create the vm uh doing the installation but this is the part where we're gonna focus on because we have already i'm assuming if you're watching this video that you have already done the installation. So we're going to focus on doing all of this stuff first, right? So we're going to update the software, remove the, the repositories, all the stuff that I mentioned before. Before I do anything over here, I'm going to log in. So I think I remember the password of this computer. Oh, yeah, I remember the password of this computer. So I'm going to log in into my VM over here. Let me go back to have the checklist over here. I need to update the system. So yes, we're gonna update it right after we log in successfully. Uh, so I'm gonna go skip next. I have never logged in into the system before. This is the first time. But before I do anything, I'm just gonna enable the partners repositories right away. So what? How do you do that? It's very simple. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go into this presentation and you go all the way to the end, um, there is gonna be instructions on how to do all of this. However, you know. Um, I'm just going to do it in this video for the sake of the video, so, uh, so I'm going to have it over here and we're going to click on this and we're going to type software, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open software and updates. I'm going to do it one more time, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to click on the, on the applications menu and I'm going to look for the word software. You're not going to click on the black one, you're going to click on the gray one, the one that says software and updates, not software updates, not this one, but this one. Okay, this app in this application over here, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, so we have canonical support the free and open software, that's great. Community, proprietary software is enabled, uh, and software restricted is enabled, perfect. And then we're going to click on other software, and we're going to click on canonical partners, and we're going to type our password, right? Once we type our password, we can literally just close this because we're, we're not going to do none of the rest. This is the only thing we need. This is going to refresh the software repositories. And a software repository is nothing but a place where, um, uh, well, this, the list of software pretty much that Ubuntu can download is going to be refreshed. It's going to pop out for an update, but we're not going to do the update yet. close that we're gonna wait for that to be done we're gonna I'm gonna go back into our guide over here right so we are gonna run this command over here to get all of these tasks done in one shot you know this is called a one-liner which is one command that does 
you know that takes care of doing a bunch of tasks in one shot so this script over here I have already explained what it does uh, in another video so if you want to go and watch that uh, so I'm just gonna run it in this video but basically what this command is doing is that it's installing the application called curl and once curl is installed it's using the application curl to get this script and then it's gonna send the script to our shell which is the program that executes the commands in our terminal or in our terminal application and what we are going to do is that I'm gonna open Firefox and I'm gonna go to github that com uh, ra 559 and then CIS 106 then over here I'm gonna go into guides sorry guides once I'm there I am gonna go to Ubuntu VM setup and I'm going to scroll down to the line that has my one liner over here and I'm just gonna copy this right just gonna copy this I'm gonna click on applications over here then I'm gonna search for my terminal application once I'm in my terminal application please make sure that the update service is not running that the only applications that you have running at the moment is Firefox and your terminal and I'm gonna right click and paste and I'm gonna press enter I'm gonna type in my password over here notice that when you type your password the characters are not shown on the screen that is what is supposed to happen that is a security feature that is not a flaw okay so Ubuntu is gonna do the update and it's gonna do all the other stuff that it's supposed to do I'm gonna post the video and I'm going to unpause it once I feel that it's necessary to explain anything okay now this the script has finished executing and we have successfully updated our system we have removed all the software that we won't be using in this computer like all those games that come pre-installed we have installed some essential software that we are going to be using like vim and uh, the genie text editor uh, we have disabled animations from our desktop so now we can feel it that it's already snappier than it was before um, uh, we have changed the default for manager we have also replaced the this default the screenshot tool if you actually go into your um, into your Ubuntu machine right over here in your virtual machine and you press the print screen key on your keyboard you're gonna notice that a different application shows this is the application that I use on a daily basis of my Ubuntu machine to take screenshots and it is very very useful because it goes automatically into a screen into the select a uh, particular area um, mode pretty much and it allows me to do annotations in the screen and you know I can even draw if I want to uh, right here I can even draw if I want to I can save uh, my screenshot I can copy it to the clipboard I can do and redo my changes I can move around uh, the you know the selected area and, and stuff like that it's a very very useful tool I, I think it's one of the most uh, useful tools that I have found and it's also available in every Linux distribution out there so that's also a big a big plus um, uh, uh, we have also enabled dark team in our system uh, so we have done all of that now the next step is to install the restricted restricted extras sorry so we're gonna copy this um, this um, this command and we have it open over here as well and we're just gonna paste it in our terminal so we can do copy and we can go into our terminal I want to clear the screen so I'm gonna type clear and if I want to paste in the terminal I can I can either right click and paste or I can press Control shift and letter V as a vector in the keyboard and that will paste right away Okay, this, um, the reason why I separated this command from this script is because of this window over here. It is important for me to explain this. Now, sometimes installing programs, while installing programs in your system, you might be prompted to uh, agree to a particular license agreement or 
to select options into what the program wants you to do. When you reach a screen like this, you can press the tab key on your keyboard to move around different options or you can use the arrow keys. Once you have uh, selected the particular option that you want, don't press enter, press the space bar. For instance, here I want to accept the end user license agreement. I'm going to use the arrow key to select option yes and I'm going to press the space bar. Again, not enter the space bar. The, the space bar. Uh, this package is not big so it should install right away so we're just going to wait for it. Now the next thing the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the guest additions. And as you can see over here, you have uh, first of all you have an explanation on top. You can read it on your free time, and you have also a nice, a nice little GIF over here that it that shows you how to install the guest additions, which is a package or you know or an extra package that will give you more functionality of your virtual machine. For instance, if I try to go full screen right now, I can't do it. I'm stuck in this little square. After installing the Yes additions, I will be able to do that. It will also give me the functionality of actually dragging and dropping files from my host to my guest. And those are the two main things that we want out of the Guest additions. So what we're going to do is that we are going to close the terminal. Uh, and what we're going to do is that we're going to minimize that. And we're going to click on uh, Devices. And we're going to click on Insert Guest additions. We're going to click, oh, we're going to find, okay. so. We're download and download you might be prompted to do all of this uh, and if you do just click on download download and download as you can see I was missing this particular part of my VirtualBox installation but now I have it and now I can click on insert you know uh, you probably won't have that issue but if you get it all you have to do is just do exactly the same thing as I did in this video uh, once you get this prompt over here all you have to do is click on run this will open a terminal, type your password, and you are done. This is going to take a little bit. Now this will require a reboot, but we're not going to reboot the system yet. We want to finish this part first. Uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to change our desktop environment. So we're going to change that. Uh, before we do the reboot. The reboot is literally the last thing we're going to do. And then we're going to install our v uh, Visual Studio Code extensions, but we're going to do them after we do the reboot. Actually, as a matter of fact, we can just reboot right away. We don't have to. Um, we don't have to wait. Let me just wait. Uh, we just we're just waiting for this to finish. Uh, is the guest edition installations? taking a little bit okay now that it has been now that the guest edition have installed successfully we are going to press enter over there so that it quits and we're going to restart our system so we're going to click on the power button on the top power off and restart
the system is restarting okay now we're gonna log in one more time however before we logged in we're gonna change our default session and we're gonna click on the juice icon over here in the button and we're gonna change to GNOME flashback metacity As you can see, our desktop environment looks very different than how it looked before. Uh, this one is much more simpler than uh, GNOME 3, uh, and that's exactly one of the reasons why I prefer it, because not only is simpler, but it's also way more efficient than GNOME 3. Uh, it gives us a functional computer, you know, sacrificing only those flashy effects that GNOME 3 has that makes it a little bit bloated. Now, I want to show you something. Let's say I want to go full screen. Voila. I can use my entire window now because I have the guest additions installed. And not only that, but Ubuntu can also resize to whatever part of, of the screen that I want to use. And it is fully functional. Uh, now, what we're going to do is that we're going to install uh, virtual, um, sorry, we're going to install Visual Studio Code's extensions. So gonna open Firefox so that I can have the list right next to me. Okay, I want to have both applications side by side, so I am gonna press on the first one, right on the name, and I'm gonna press the Windows key and the right arrow to snap the first one to the right, and I'm gonna do the same thing to Firefox. I'm going to click on the top bar over here, right on the window, on the border of the window, and I'm going to press my Windows key and the left key so that I can snap them and have them side by side. So we're going to install all of these extensions here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we can close that, we're going to close here, click on the Gears icon and click on Extensions, similar to how we do it with it on Windows. As a matter of fact, the exact same process. So I'm going to look for Live Server. Mark down. So we're going to install Markdown only one. We also want to start markdown, markdown preview enhanced, markdown to PDF, and markdown table of content. So I'm gonna I'm gonna search for markdown TOC, and I'm going to install it as well. Let me see if I'm missing any other extension. Uh, encode spell checker, yes.
okay just wait until these guys are installed and that's perfect okay so we can close this and we can close VS Code since VS Code is already ready to work and now I want to show you um, how you can change your theme back to the light theme because I understand that everybody is a fan of the dark theme in your um, in their computers so if you open the Twix app by going into applications system tools preferences and then Twix and then you go to the appearance section here you can change the default look of your Ubuntu system um, I like I prefer to use Yaru dark that's why I have I set the script to set up to that Yaru dark but if you prefer a light theme you can also change to Yaru the regular theme and it's gonna change to uh, your light theme I find that ugly so I'm gonna use back my Yaru light theme uh, I am going to close this and that is it for this video I'll see you on the next one.